Nick Software is dead. Google has killed it. Color Effects Pro, dead. Silver Effects, dead. Something that photographers have used for years to tone and color their photos, dead, or soon will be. It's already stopped working on some of the new MacBooks. Pretty soon, it'll stop working on whatever computer you're using. What are we going to do? I'm going to show you. Stick around. Okay, so when Google bought Nick software, we knew that wasn't going to be a really good fit. Uh, they pick stuff out and put it into Google Photos and and they left the Nick software for sale. Um, but Google is not a software company. Google is an advertising company. So it, it really didn't fit anywhere within Google. Finally, a couple of months ago, they made it free, but they said it's no longer supported. That means at some point there's going to be an update to uh, your operating system or to Photoshop, and Nick is going to stop working. At the same time, Adobe started to charge subscriptions for Photoshop and Lightroom. Um, and you paid monthly, and you got updates a lot sooner than once a year. And it, that sounded like a good idea. Except with Lightroom, it's been sadly ne neglected. They've, they've had complaints from everywhere uh, that it's gotten slow, it's gotten buggy, and they've even had to put out a statement going, yep, 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 that's okay, we're working on it. Well, they're working on it for my 12 bucks a month. Um, <laughs> what have you been doing the last two years? So Lightroom's annoying me uh, a lot, and I do my uh, toning in Lightroom. Unfortunately, I'm stuck with Adobe Lightroom uh, because it has my catalogue in it. And I think they're relying on that fact to keep taking our money and not doing anything. Um, maybe a little cynical and hard, but hey, that's how it's starting to feel. But a company called MacFun is coming to the rescue. And they're already here. Now, probably less than a year ago, they released a product called Luminar. And Luminar, basically, it's everything you ever wanted in Nick, but more. So I'm going to just take you through a walkthrough of Luminar today so that you can see what it does. Now, at the moment, it doesn't have a catalog function, so it can't completely replace Lightroom but they're working on it now. And the other thing is Luminar for sub hundred dollars is just a one-time payment. You buy it, you own it. There will be paid upgrades that you can choose to either get or not get, depending on what features they're offering. Um, but in the last year, there's been just a whole lot of free updates and and new features added, so they're really doing the right thing by the customers. So I'm I'm happy to recommend uh, Luminar software, uh, and we'll, I'll just show you a bit of what it does. So we're going to start. I pulled some photos that uh, might be good examples, and we're just going to go edit, edit in Luminar, because it has a plugin. It has a Lightroom plugin and a Photoshop plugin. So you can take your photos straight from those two applications 
and save them back into those applications. So we're just going to go edit with Luminar and it's going to give us a edit with uh, Lightroom adjustments. Well, this has got no Lightroom adjustments at all on it. It's just a um, uh, just a raw file or actually it's a TIFF, but um, yeah, no adjustments being made to it. Now, it, it works a little differently than, than what you might be expecting, but all the features that you used to have in Nick software are available in Luminar. And that's because once Google bought Nick, the guys just walked down the road and, and a couple of them set up Mac Fun software and, and they've been making a lot of software over the last, um, you know, five years or so. Uh, but really, they hit their stride with Aurora HDR and then Luminar. So we'll have a look at Luminar. And the first really neat thing is, for if you're not a photographer as such, um, and you're just out taking, uh, or even if you are a photographer, and you're just taking friends and family snaps at a barbecue or a party or something like that, you don't want to process each one of them through Lightroom and Photoshop. That That's just uh, a waste of time um, that you're not being paid for. So not only does Luminar do batch processing, but it does batch processing with a filter called Accent AI. Um, artificial intelligence and when you use this filter you can boost it and boost it and boost it and boost it and in fact you can turn it right up and it won't completely ruin the photo there's a a, a little bit of haloing around the trees there so we can we can we can back it off a little bit but it just makes your photo pop so what I like to do if I'm shooting in a location and I come back with 100 or 200 photos of, of that location, I like to batch process them with the AI filter at 50%. And that takes care of a lot of the raw processing um, that I would normally do. And I can have a look at the photos and then start choosing uh, which ones are worth working on further and things like that. But if I'm going to someone's party, then I can just put them all into Luminar, batch process them with the AI filter, and everyone's really happy with the result. So you can see the before and after here. It's just added some vibrancy, some clarity, some sharpness, and it's just really cleaned up the image and given it some pop. So that's the first filter and there are a lot of filters um, adjustable gradient I won't read them all out but you also get samples uh, over here of exactly sort of what they do if you don't know what cross processing is um, yeah if you do not know what the Details enhances the fog filter, um, golden hour, and the list just goes on and on and on. And you can stack these filters. You can stack these filters any way you want. You can do your initial tone uh, as you would in Lightroom. Add some contrast to the scene. You have a smart tone control and that kind of evens out and tries to pick up what you miss and what it thinks you need. Um, but uh, again, we'll bring down the highlights. Uh, we'll lift the shadows a bit and we'll bring down the whites and crush those blacks. And really, to be honest, you know, I've, I've done that and the AI filter also did that with just one swipe. 
but I can add a further filter if that was taken in the morning I can add the golden hour filter and give it a bit of morning glow so you've got a saturation control there and it's getting a little bit too saturated so we'll we'll just pull that down a bit but you also have your brush tool your gradient mask and your radial mask um, and you can you can apply those things to individual filters in the stack so if I choose my paintbrush and click on the golden hour filter I can put the amount up to uh, 95 percent and I can put it in erase mode make the brush a little bigger and I can brush out where I do not want the golden hour filter to happen so and I'll, I'm going to leave it on the pond because I really like it on the pond and we we'll zoom back out and down here doesn't matter and I can add another filter I can add a polarizing filter to help with your skies and that pulls them in quite nicely and I can add a vignette and soften it up a bit because we want to draw our audience's image into the fountain and the bridge beyond the uh, beautiful willow and you can actually sometimes I just like to add a vignette by changing the inner brightness and adding inner brightness so you have this whole range of filters um, and then once you've done one pass you can add another adjustment layer that will sit on top of it and you can continue going and we can do our sharpening that way and we can add another filter structure is good but we don't want structure on the lake so we'll pick up our brush again still on a race and we'll take the structure off the water because the water really should be nice and smooth and because it's the morning it should be a little glowy so why don't we go to image radiance and in image radiance Is a good filter so that you can actually see um, the workflow so we'll, we'll brighten it up and now you see that image radiance has been applied to the entire photo but we don't want it on the entire photo we just want to pick up our brush and apply it and so we'll, we'll go to the paint rather than erase we'll go to paint okay and then when we start painting the rest of the photo will pop back to normal and you paint on the filter that you you like and we'll we'll put a little bit up here in the trees but yeah that's nice so that's luminar um so let me uh let me just cancel this and let me take you to uh, another photo and I'll show you some other tricks so edit in Luminar and this is a shot from uh, Three Creeks in New Zealand uh, which uh, if I remember correctly was on the way to uh, uh, Mount Cook from Queenstown um, that's all getting blurry now it's it's been over a year but this is well I don't know if it was a museum or a um, 
a novelty shop or whatever when I got there. It was seven o'clock in the morning and it just looked like a cool place to take photos. So, uh, and I wasn't going to stick around until whatever time they opened to find out exactly what they were. So now with, with both silver effects and Nick color effects, uh, you had presets. You had one click presets and you have the same in Luminar. It comes with a whole lot of preset packs. And as well as that, you can go to their website and they have free packs and they have some packs for sale. Now, there's none of this uh, Lightroom uh, $200 for a preset pack type thing because, you know, they people think you can afford Lightroom, you can afford $200 for my presets. The most expensive presets uh, I've seen um, is $22 Australian, but uh, Jim Nix at nomadicpursuits.com, I recommend you visit his website. He has uh, preset packs for $5 US, and I'll show you some of those. Well, this is one of those packs now, uh, Wonderlust. And uh, he, he also does uh, another one which which I love called Movable Feast. And and there we go. We can one click and golden hour on the sign. Sign? See, I don't know French. So that's a little strong. So if it's a little strong, you have an opacity here that you can lower. And you can mix the effect in. And it's very simple. As well as that, you might like the effect, but you want to make some changes. You, you so uh, things like the split color warmth. Maybe maybe it's a little too warm for you. So we'll we'll turn the warmth down. You can adjust the saturation because that orange, the car actually was that color. It was really bright orange. I. I don't know whether they made it or, or whether that was a paint job, but uh, it's a little oversaturated. So we're, we're just going to turn that down. <clears throat> and playing with these adjustments and modifying them helps you learn what each filter does and the effect it can have on a, a, a photo. So that's terrific. And also over at Jim's site, uh, again, nomadicpursuits.com, he has a whole lot of tutorials on Luminar. And he's a great teacher. He's a lot of fun. Uh, I urge you to go over and uh, check out his stuff. But not only that, I've added, I've added a preset now. I can add another adjustment layer. And... Now the presets come up and I can pick something else, another look that I want to stack on top of it. Uh, and we could, we could, uh, oh, okay, we'll, we'll take this because you'll be able to see it very, it's a, an extreme, but you'll be able to see it much better. Whoa, on the uh, thing, but we, we, we can turn that down. We can just give it a nice glow down at, at, at say 25% uh, and and that makes the uh, the image a lot more just glowy and you know you can do that you can just stack presets on presets again you can use the brush and or the gradient tool and say well really I only want it in the sky so we're going to draw a gradient linear gradient and apply and now the effect just like Lightroom's linear gradient it's only applied to the sky so that's really cool and you know there are lots of preset packs that you can get and that you already do get um, and the reason I've chosen Luminar this week is that they've come out with another free update um, 
and they've added in a special workspace and preset pack for aerial photography. So if you've got a DJI clone, um, drone or any drone, but uh, it's been inspired by DJI, um, then these are particular presets for you that suit uh, aerial photography. Let me tell you about another feature, and that is customizable workspaces. If you go up to workspace here and click on this menu, you'll see all these customizable workspaces. Now, what this is, is a collection of filters. So, for example, I'm a landscape photographer. So there are some filters that I use more than others. Um, color temperature filter, yes, certainly do. The accent I, uh, AI filter, why not? And of course, you've got your exposure and toning and, and all those things. Saturation and vibrance, I certainly want. Polarizing filter, Yes, because I don't have one to put on my... Oh, well, I do actually, but uh, I never use it. Uh, a foliage enhancer. So you can you can play around, change the uh, hue of uh, trees and, and, and plants and everything. Very nice. Clarity, structure, image radiance, top and bottom lighting. Um... Uh, is essential because, yeah, you, you've, you, you've got a different amount of light in the sky than you do on the ground. And, and your vignette. Now, that's fine. They're the basic filters that I would use for landscape uh, processing. But depending on the landscape, I might want the fog filter because it was a... Uh, it was a, a little misty when I was there. You can see the condensation on the windows of the car. So I can, I can add a bit of fog or I can add a lot of fog. So they're your customizable workspaces. And if you have a preferred workflow and a favorite set of filters that you always use, you can create your own workspace. You can create your own presets. You can stack together a whole lot of filters. And if you think that's something that you're gonna use over and over, then you can save it as a preset. Let me draw you onto something else because we've, we've done all the uh, the color things, um, and I know uh, a lot of you used silver effects for your black and white work. Well, we have a workflow in Luminar, and its filters uh, that relate primarily to black and white. And uh, what you're looking at is a uh, it's actually a sculpture. Uh, at the uh, Hills Country Club uh, in New Zealand uh, called The Wolves Are Coming. It's, it's just absolutely this amazing uh, sculpture. It's, it's very hard to see because it's a private country club um, and uh, I, I was fortunate enough to, to be on a workshop where, where we got to go to the Hills uh, Country Club and uh, shoot around the grounds and and uh, that was an experience. Seeing this in person is just an experience uh, you won't forget. Um, however, <clears throat> you've got your exposure. Okay, that's probably a bit too much on the sky. So we can use a gradient. We can even that out a bit. The only problem is I only want it to apply to the 
uh, exposure contrast, but we're in the black and white. <laughs> we're in the black and white conversion. So sorry, I thought we were we were in uh, exposure contrast filter. Uh, but uh, as you can see, your usual color filters uh, and sliders where you can uh, where you can change whatever you like, pull the blues back down a bit to to make it uh, a little darker sky, uh, and throw a red filter on there. Still pull it down a little bit. So, and clarity, your whites and blacks, uh, we can turn the whites down a little bit, uh, but we're going to, we, we're going to crush the blacks because we want a nice contrasty photo structure. You've got a curves filter and uh, that controls your, your levels and we'll add a, um, a nice bit of S curve here to give it a bit of contrast. Split toning if you want. Um, soft glow works with black and white as well. Uh, and that's something that we, we, we probably want in the sky. So now we can click on the filter. Uh, we can click on the um, a gradient, click on the filter and we can apply that to the sky so that there's a nice uh, glowiness. Um, and of course, the trouble with video on the internet is depending on your resolution, I don't know if you can really see it. Uh, you can add a texture, um, really neat. So I've, I've got a texture here um, somewhere there we are. Yep. We'll we'll add that. Okay. And uh, now you can also adjust the blending modes of of the filters, and we can change it to overlay, or we can change it to multiply. Um, yeah. It's absolutely fantastic. So that's better. That gives it a nice, nice bit of tone. And uh, there's a bit of a vignette on the uh, there's a bit of a vignette on the uh, texture overlay. Um, so, and you can also add a. Uh, uh, an image uh, layer here so you can add a texture up here it'll give you a whole whole new adjustment layer to add an image onto um, and that's how you uh, if you want to and you know how much I, I hate it uh, but if you want to add a watermark um, yep just get your watermark add it change the blend mode it's done so Look, that's a very quick look at Luminar. Now, I really hope that uh, you support MacFun uh, because they're trying to do some, some really good work. And again, you buy it once and you own it. You're not paying monthly subscriptions for it. If the next update is one that's uh, charged for, you can decide whether you whether it's got the features worth the price or whether you'll just stick with what you've got um, and the way it used to work because the subscription model a lot of software companies are going to that now and it's going to break uh, it people are going to have little bits of money coming out of or big bits of money in some cases coming out of their wallets um, every month and they're going to end up looking at their, their credit card statement and their software that they're using on their, their mobile devices and desktops this is going to be $200 a month and they're going to go holy heck why am I paying this so 
and at that point the whole thing's going to crash back in. But for now, Lumina are looking after the customers. So get on to Lumina, macfun.com. Um, the price varies depending where you are. Uh, it's uh, uh, sub $100 usually. Uh, they have special packs sometimes that they release that may be just a little more than over 100 but I think it was, uh, I think even for the grand release of this, they had a uh, sky overlay pack and a texture pack and you got all these extras and I, I think that was 120 Australian dollars. So, and that's a, that's a one-time purchase. So guys, do yourself a favor and, and get into Luminar. And I hope you've enjoyed this quick walkthrough. Uh, if you want to learn more, pop over to Jim Nix's site, nomadicpursuits.com, uh, or jump onto the uh, Mac Fun site and uh, check it out there. I'll see you next time. Thank you very much. This is Paul Summers from paulsummersphotography.com. Bye.